Hey guys, Jason Moody, creator of Gabriel and the Guardians. You may see that I'm not in my normal dungeon uh, in the basement. You know, I'm at GalaxyCon Austin. Uh, we're doing our first booth and we're doing our first panel. We're gonna be announcing our cast, the actors. It's kind of a secret, but we're gonna be announcing it at a panel here at GalaxyCon tonight. It's gonna be amazing. Uh, so if you wanna support this project, go to angel.com slash guardians and you can support us and learn more about this project. It's gonna be an awesome day. Look at awesome. what? This is James Taylor. Austin. We've had a wonderful reception here by the fans. We're getting ready to go upstairs for our panel where we're going to reveal the cast. We've got a lot of support from people walking around, coming by the booth, telling us how much they're excited to see the show and that they love the idea of an anime based on Hebrew scripture. Uh, you can support us by going to angel.com guardians and letting us know how you feel about the show. Hello, GalaxyCon. Thank you all for being here and staying late so you can see this amazing uh, panel here. I am Christy Blanche, but I am going to introduce you to James, 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 Arnold, 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 Taylor, 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 Taylor. Thank you, Christy. Hello there. Oh, yes. I say hello there, you say hello there, right? Hello there. Hello. Oh, you're so good. Hey, this is fun, huh? Welcome to Austin. How many folks are from Austin here? One or two. How many drove a long way? How many drove a really long way? Well, all right, that one dude, yeah, all right, totally. Well, I am so thrilled to be here because this is something new and exciting. Does anybody know what we're going to talk about tonight? Anybody at all? Well, it is a new show, and uh, you know, I've been very blessed as an actor. I'm a voice actor, and that means I spend my days in little padded rooms talking to myself. <laughs> they used to call it crazy, now they call it lucrative, and, um, and I'm blessed to do it. I've been a lot of different characters, and a lot of people ask me then uh, about what I do for a living, and they always say, well, have I seen you in anything? So people say, have I heard you in anything? To which case I say, well, I've been Jedi's. A Johnny. And a Jack. That's, That's Captain. Captain Jack Sparrow. A mouse. A dog. And a cat. Hairball. Hairball. <laughs> a caveman. Some villains. A mini we too. In Guardians of the Galaxy, I'm Cosmo and Yondu. In video games, I'm Ratchet, it's true, but there are also many others that I'd like to tell you, like Tidus and Spider-Man, Silver Surfer, Magneto, Gingy, Prince Charming, Cowabunga, there's Leo, the minions are me, and a Transformer too. I voice them in games, they're great fun to do. But sometimes celebrities can't provide their own voice, so I jump in and give them a choice, like Great Scott, it's Christopher Lloyd, R.J. Baruchel, Andre the Giant, or Christopher Walken when they need more cowbell. Wow. 
But wait, there's more, like the stuff that you hear at the end of the show when the credits are near. It's Animation Domination Sunday, 7.36, 30 Central on Fox. In closing, I'm also that voice that comes on that speaks really fast. First it's there, then it's gone. <gasps> Offer expires November 30th. See store for details. Batteries not included. Acts for subsidies. Some of them required. Member FDIC. Use only as directed. Yes, it's all a part of the crazy VO that makes up the life of a voice acting Joe like me. So that's a little sneak peek of what I do in the studio doing some voices. There was supposed to be some music with that, but it didn't, it didn't come on. But that's cool. All right, are we having a good time? So we know that I'm Obi-Wan Kenobi, and you know I'm Jedi Master Plo Koon. How many knew that? Did you know that? Plo Koon? We got some Plo Koon fans? I still want the Plo Koon spinoff, don't you? I want... Yeah. I'd also like to see the Duchess and Obi-Wan when they were younger, but that's another story for another day. That's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about something very cool, and you are going to hear it maybe for the first time tonight, but it's called... Gabriel and the Guardians, and it is a very, very cool show, and it is, we're going to bring out, actually, we're going to bring out the creator of it and one of the producers of it. Would you like to meet them and learn more about Gabriel and the Guardians? Oh, come on now. Let's learn about Gabriel and the Guardians. Let's bring out Al Moore. He's a founder, producer, and animator of Gabriel and the Guardians. Al, where are you? Come on, let's hear it for Al. There he is. And the creator of Gabriel and the Guardians, the founder and art director as well, Jason Moody. Jason, there he is. He's the guy that helped me with the video earlier. Look at that. Are we going to sit? Are we going to do like a standard panel, sit down and, and look really important? Well, you know, when I was making this, I really wanted to. You can do all that stuff, Jason. Welcome, guys. Thanks for joining us here. And uh, say hello there to your new fans, right? Hello, hello. Hello. Okay. So... Gabriel and the Guardians, we could talk about it, we will talk about it, but would you like to like give them a little tease first? What do you think, uh, Jason? Yeah, that sounds like that could be fun. You guys want to see a little of what it's all about? Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at a little teaser trailer, as we call in the yeah, business. Bear with us, because we're going to make sure that we've got sound on. Yeah, let's make sure we have sound. Long ago, the world of Aura descended into chaos, and paradise was lost. False gods from the unseen realm deceived the people of Ara, stealing their birthright. Mortals roamed the wasteland, hopelessly searching for purpose. <laughs> and that brings us to me, a celestial guardian, sent as a light piercing the darkness. My name is Gabriel. Woohoo! It's Gabriel. Gabriel and the Guardians. Hey, here's something you're going to notice about Gabriel and the Guardians. It's got a real kind of anime feel to it, and we're going to get into that as to why. But first, uh, Jason, what inspired you to make this show? Mm, that's a good question. Um, well, I'm, I'm not from the industry. I, don't, I never worked on, uh, on a show before or anything like that. I was uh, working as a uh, banker. Uh, no, not actually a banker. <laughs> But I did work at J.P. Morgan Chase as a media developer. Okay. Uh, it's just more fun to say banker. It is. Yes. <laughs> I was a banker that turned into show, an animated... <laughs> uh, but uh, COVID hit. Yeah. And uh, I just found myself with a lot of time on my hands. As I Nobody else can relate to that, I'm sure, right? We don't have any. And, um, you know, what happened was uh, as I started to um, fill that time with... Uh, some listening to some podcasts and reading uh, and spending some time in the book of Genesis. Yeah. I found uh, it fascinating, actually. And um, I started drawing characters and imagining a fantasy world inspired by these things that I was reading. And yeah. um, over time, it developed into a story. And that's kind of where it started. That is awesome. And so th I think the one thing that's really inspiring is so many of you folks come up to the table and you say hello there. And then you say, I'm a creator. I'm an artist. I'm, I'm, I've got dreams of doing these things. And I, I, what I love is, is Jason did it. And he's here now on the stage talking about it with you all. So be inspired. And also, you know, never give up on the dreams that you have out there, too. And that's always really important. And Al, you have worked in animation, actually, for 
a, a little bit of time. Yeah. Can you tell us a little about your history? Yeah, I've, I've worked on a few uh, shows you probably have never heard of. Um, <laughs> I worked on uh, Lion King, Pocahontas, uh, Lilo and Stitch, Brother Bear, uh, a few shows in the 90s. I don't, I'm not familiar with those, yeah. <laughs> anyone, heard, anyone heard of those before? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's pedigree, man. <laughs> yeah. So what drew you to Gabriel and the Guardians? So s- the story. Uh, what happened was our, our other partner isn't here right now, but um, his name is David Cunningham. So there's three, there's three of us. My, my wife calls us Triceratops. <laughs> but... Um, he, yeah, he, uh, he sent us, or he sent me a copy of the script that he was working on with Jason, and uh, he was like, hey, give this a read, because uh, we used to work together at another studio for eight years, and he said, just give me, this is a project I'm working on, take a, take a look at this, see what you think about it, you know, and, and give me your feedback. Jason, was that a specific idea to you, that you thought, I want this in this style? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I grew up on anime, love it, um, and I, in particular, my, I've passed that honestly on to my daughter, who is now a huge anime fan, you know, really into My Hero Academia and, and a number of slice of life animes. Um, and so, uh, you know, it, it, com- it comes honestly, I've been, you know, I was a huge Trigun fan, a huge Dragon Ball, I'm not ashamed to admit I was a Dragon Ball Z fan. <laughs> Um, and uh, and so that's just always been really kind of deep in my art style. Yeah. And so, yeah, so, and so you are the artist behind all this as well then, yeah? Yeah, I did all the concept designs. And, and actually, we're, we're, so we've partnered with an actual uh, overseas studio that works on animes such as Megalobox, such as Lupin the Third, Pokemon Sun and Moon. And they've mm-hmm. taken my concepts and redesign them and giving them that flavor even further like push it even further because i think that that's also kind of the thing is people go, well okay it's american but it's you know it's paying homage to anime it's influenced by anime it's inspired by anime you can say all that but at the same time if you're looking at it you're thinking this is an anime show and i think that that's the coolest part of it because it's 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 put together with folks that do that on a regular basis i think that would be the hope i think that we 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 want to honor um anime as best we can and, and, and show that this is a love letter. To that yeah. Um, and in that, we ended up finding a studio that really loved the concept that works on actual animes and said, we want to be a part of this. And so that was just a really cool thing. It is very cool. Now, it's about, a lot of this show is about identity as well. Uh, I don't know if either one of you want to jump in on that and kind of explain, because I think identity is kind of a key thing in this this day and age now. We're all kind of searching and seeking and trying to find out who we are and what we, you know, I, I personally have had my own identity stories in my life where I found out some interesting information about myself at a very late age in life. And also when you do a lot of different voices all the time, when you're constantly being Captain Jack Sparrow or, or Hiccup from How to Train Your Dragon or uh, Christopher Walken, as I said, or, whoa, wait a second, Doc, you mean to tell me that I'm not Michael J. Fox? Okay, wait. Um, when you're dealing with being a bunch of other people, you always kind of wonder, who the heck am I? And I but I, what I have found is meeting beautiful, wonderful fans as yourselves, we're all kind of looking for that. And is that... That was a key factor for you with this, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, having teenagers um, and watching them m- meander through high school and, and have at every turn um, different things that are vying for a piece of their identity and trying to tell them what they should or shouldn't be. Right. Um, you know, I think that what, what, what we found is that it would be great to, um, you know, at our core, what, what What's a, what's a theme that everybody, I remember being in high school and yeah. trying to figure out who am I? Yep. The question, who am I? Who am I going to be and, and do the things that I do, do those determine who I am? Yeah. And, and so I think we wanted to wrestle with some of those things and you know, we don't want to tell anybody what their identity is. Sure. But we do want to say you should be finding your identity. Yeah. I say that I have a podcast and I, I um, say, you know, know what you believe and why you believe it. Because you, you got to know yeah. what you're all about and why. But uh, so speaking of me, because I like that topic, I kid, I kid. Um, I uh, now, um, 
I, I am in this show. You are. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I are. like that part. Um, and I play, do you guys want to know who I play or what, I, what I'm about? Yeah. We're not going to tell you that. But no. <laughs> uh, so can you tell me a bit about who I play, either one of yeah. you? I don't know. You want to jump yeah, in and so, um, introduce them to? We have a character called Malacros. Malacros. Sounds like a friendly, fun guy. Yeah. And Malacros is our season one villain. Oh. So, Wait a second. You mean James funny. gets to play a bad guy for a change? That's pretty cool. Yeah, I was going to say a shift, right? Yeah. I, I really loved the opportunity to get to play somebody bad. Would, would you all like to see me play a bad guy for a once in a while? Yeah. Yes, okay, good. Ooh, am I that big guy right so, there? So, yeah, so let's, so no, wait, in let's see. the show, there, there are these big giants. Yeah. Like well, sure, typecast again. Look at me, I'm huge. <laughs> <laughs> um, but these giants, they have a master. Okay. And that master is not that guy. No, but that guy's cool. I like that guy. Can I be we'll that, guy? that guy? Oh, okay, bummer. All right. But you're this yeah. guy. Ooh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Although red's not usually my color, but... Uh, <laughs> this, uh, this is the guy that discovers how to take the DNA of the gods ah. and create giants from that DNA. Create giants from the DNA. Okay, I like it. I wonder what he sounds like. I know what he sounds like, but I, I don't... I, we're not going to... We're not going to get there yet. No. Well, he sounds like a very cool, uh, cool dude. Yeah. You know, somebody you want to party with, someone I want to hang out and party with. But there's another character in this that um, his name is Nock, right? Yeah. Now, that would have to be somebody voiced, some, you'd have to get somebody really special to voice a character like Nock. Nock is like one of the main heroes of season one. Okay. So, for somebody special like that, do y'all think. They would need to go with somebody that's kind of, well, almost like a chosen one, right? <laughs> I, I think so. In fact, do I hear some knocking from backstage? Is that, wait a second, is that Anakin? Is that, ladies and gentlemen, Matt Lanter? Yeah. I, there he is. I told them, I told them I, I had to use the joke, knock, knock. <laughs> there it is. There you go. Matt, okay. Do you want to hear? You come Are you sit. Give me your chair. Yes, you take. Oh, please, wow. please, you. Anakin, sit down. Thank yes. You so much. Thank you. Hey guys. He would have just force pushed me out of the way. Anyway. <laughs> well, okay, okay. All right. Hang on. So pretty cool. We get to work together again. I know. I can't wait. And I just found out that you're the bad guy. And yeah. Maybe I'm a good guy. You're so a good guy. I might get the switcheroo. Well, yeah. Killing or I don't know. So that's him. Look at. Why do you have more muscles than me? I don't get it. That's always kind of the way it goes. Look at you. He, does, he looks like a, a hero. Yeah. He does look like a hero. That's awesome. Typecast again for you, yes. <laughs> so, Matt, do you have questions about Knock? Well, I've got so many questions. Yeah. I don't know what questions I'm allowed to ask. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, uh, so, something I did see, yeah. you spoke about the Giants. Yeah. No, can you tell me a little bit about Nock's relation to the Giants? Yeah, so you know, you know, one, of first, one, of, one of Nock's first lines is, my name is Nock of the Bakora tribe, and I kill Giants. So he's a Giant Slayer. Yeah. Giant yeah. Slayer. Right. Yeah. No, did I, did, is it, I saw something on I don't know if we can say this. Yeah. Can we say that? His mom. His mom. There's oh. stuff going on. I actually don't know oh, what man. I can say. Oh, no. <laughs> this is not all for if, if, it, if our see, head writer was here, I'm sure he'd be like... <laughs> you got to understand. <laughs> Matt and I have spent you know, two decades working in Star Wars, basically, where you can say nothing about anything true, at yeah. all. We're so we're trained. always just like, people are like, how are you? You're like, Matt. I don't know. <laughs> Ask George Lucas how yeah, we this, are. This isn't a Marvel show, but I feel like Kevin Feige almost came out and drug you off the stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the the, the, the the mother Yeah, there. so there's there's some there's some stuff with the mother. Okay, all right, I got yeah. it. Got it, got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Not in the sand or anything. No sand people yeah, involved. Okay, okay. Got he actually loves sand. Oh. Yeah. He yeah. loves yeah. sand. Yeah, he you loves get to play somebody oh. that loves sand for a Yeah, diversity. Loves That's sand. good. Oh, hates water. Look at, oh thank you, sir. <laughs> I got a chair. Look at that. Okay. All right. Well so okay. 
So knock. Uh, yeah, Al, did you have anything you, yeah, were you going to well, say? Real quick, I do want to say, I don't, I don't think that that's a huge thing. So he is driven to kill giants because, I'll let you say it, go for it. Because his, he watched his mother be eaten by a giant. Yes. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. I mean, so, I think maybe he's got some some anger, he's, he's, some he's little, some anger issues he's there. Chip on his shoulder. Yeah, and so that. he's 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 been selected to become a cleric. The clerics of the Bakora tribe are, you know, not supposed to seek revenge, or they're they're following the ways of the the old ways of the creator, and uh, yet he is he is driven to secretly go out and try to seek revenge um and so he's kind of caught in between i mean who 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 hasn't been caught in between the thing that they want to be yeah and the thing that they are currently existing in i thought you were going to say caught between like you know a giant and, a, and another giant i was gonna say if i had a dollar a for every time because in a hard place I mean, i'm five foot four i'm always yeah oh oh yes. yeah there, there he goes he's getting the hang of this now right we're loosening up here all right gabriel and the guardians ladies and gentlemen okay very good so, uh, very exciting. Now, we will be, you know, recording together again, back together again, doing voices together again, doing characters, and, and there's, there's a lot of exciting stuff. But, we're going to let you go. Yeah. <laughs> <But> <laughs> because you were, you were like the big, are we excited that Matt Lanter is going to be in this? Now, I, I, yeah. but let me ask, let me ask, you guys do have, you don't have any footage of him, right? So we're not going to show any footage of him in action. We've, we're going to show some other stuff. Because we even have other people to talk about that are going to be on this show. Yep. So we're going to let you go on with your, your evening. Well, and I'm just going to sit there and watch you guys <laughs> talk about this. <laughs> Literally be because I'm interested. <laughs> oh, well, you can be with us if you want. I just wanted to give you your Stay evening. Out. So Matt will be here tomorrow as well. You all going to come by and say hello to him at his booth? I'm right next to him, so then you can say hi to me. And then there's this gal, she's a newbie, Ashley Eckstein, you haven't heard of her. She's got this very small line that nobody ever waits to get her autograph, it's very sad, but the three of us, in fact, the three of us have a Clone Wars panel tomorrow, I believe on the main stage as well. And so uh, be looking for us there because we have a lot of fun when we do that. We'll take your questions and answers and stuff too, but other than that, you're just enjoying Austin. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm enjoying watching you host this <laughs> Awkwardly <laughs> watching me right, host this panel. Okay. okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, the new star of Gabriel and the Guardians, yeah, Matt Lanter. Matt Let's hear it for him. Ooh, you've got you on your shirt, too. Look at that. He's on, on his shirt. Yeah. Mine's this. Mine's good. I like that, but I'm not on the back of my shirt. That's Guys? In your, that's in your lunchbox. Yes. Oh, okay. It's yes. on a lunchbox. We got lunchboxes. Did you know that? Thank you, Matt. All right. All right. Fine. You can go now. Yeah, okay. I like this because I actually get to... All right, Anakin. Move along. Move along. Move along. Move along. It's always about Anakin. There he goes, quietly, off the stage. Oh, and he's literally just sitting right there. Wait a second. Matt Lanter, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. And he's... No, way, he's back. He's back. He's back. This is like, this is day to day with me, with him. This is it. You know, he li we live near each other, Matt and I, and he actually bought a house higher than mine. He lives up on a hill. I'm, I'm not making this up. Oh, I turned it off. I, I, I turned it off. No, 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 no. I have the high ground. <laughs> Don't try it. <laughs> All right. So true. Okay, I'm going to move back over here. All right, guys. Are we having fun? Are we learning about yeah. this? It's kind of really, it's, you know, it's really cool because it was like, okay, how do we talk about this? How do we introduce this whole thing and show uh, this new show that's very different? Again, it's not Star Wars, but it is, it is so cool. And it is, uh, again, inspired by anime, which I love. But... Al, you've gone from working in all aspects of animation. This is a very different style for you. Can Correct. you talk a bit about that for a second? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's well, the, the good thing about it is it's a different style as far as anime versus what I was doing at Disney. But what we like about this, or what I love about it, is that we all decided we wanted to do 2D because, uh, you know, the hand-drawn, art form has kind of gotten a bit lost. I know, I know in Japan they do it a lot, but here in the States, it's kind of switched over to a lot of CG. And, um, you know, it, it, 
it really showcases, I think, uh, you know, what, let me put it this way, and I don't want to offend anybody, but to me, CG is a little clean looking. You know, it, it lacks the, um, the human grand. interaction, yeah. the human. Except know, the for Clone Wars, thickness. of course. Yes. Right. Hey, Wars. now, I because love that Clone was Wars. Beyond, okay? <laughs> yes, no, I know, I know. But no, and, and so, you know, we wanted to bring it back and, and do, the, uh, do a 2D show. Give it a classic feel. Yeah. Some of my favorite Disney movies are the ones where you can really see the line work. Like oh, yeah. You can just see. 101 know, Dalmatians. Yeah, Jungle yeah. Book. You can yeah. see the sketches. It's, yeah. it's great. And as far as anime series, will we see any parallels in this show from things that have inspired you guys? Oh, yeah, for, for sure. sure. Yeah. yeah. Can you give us any of those or anything? What what inspired you? What are some of the ones that you guys? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, as I said, Trigun. I think that there's a, something really awesome about the story that's told in Trigun, um, and and the the this narrative about family to yeah. some extent, you know. Um, and so, I, you know, I, inspired by that, I, I, obviously, like I watched Avatar: The Last Airbender with yeah. my kids. I know that, yeah. And yeah. so it was great. Avatar The Last Airbender was awesome because I watched it. And then when I had kids, I watched it with them, my two daughters. Yeah. And then I had two sons. Ah. And, you know, and they were the next ones. And then we watched it again with them. And so we've watched it as, you know, three times through. Uh, and did you hear family. all the parts that I, because I did a couple of characters in that show. Did you always go, hey, there's James. Is that real? Just... Yeah, I really was in that show. Really? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. We didn't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm um, no D. Bradley Baker, but... Uh... <laughs> um, and so I think that what, what Avatar does awesome is Avatar has this great, this great hero's journey yeah. and these great characters, and then it, it just effortlessly weaves in this deep texture of... Um, culture and, yeah. and philosophy, you know, uh, you know the, a lot of Buddhist philosophy in this beautiful way. Yeah. And so, you know, as I was finding a lot of life in particularly the Torah and reading some of the ancient Hebrew scriptures, I was like, well, could, could you do that same thing with a fantasy story, but use the yeah. Hebrew scriptures as, you know, some of the grounding of philosophy. Well, somewhat like Lord of the Rings or the Chronicles of Narnia, yeah. where again, they're almost, you know, uh, they're not analogies, but they're really allegories almost of, of you know, biblical scripture in that yeah. regard. Well, yeah, and I mean, but, what's cool about Lord of the Rings is that Lord of the Rings does the same thing. Right? Yeah. The Lord of the Rings takes, uh, you know, Celtic, Norse, a lot of um, the, those, those ancient uh, European mythologies yeah. and, lo and folklores and weaves it into this fantasy world. And so, again, it was like, well, could you do that with some of the, some of the Mesopotamian, you know, Sumerian and Assyrian and, and Semitic proto-Hebrew cultures and, and myths and legends and lores? And what if you had a fantasy world built out of that? Very cool. So, yeah. so uh, I see, is it, she on the screen there? Yeah, that's Nemea. Nemea. So Nemea. Speaking of Sumerian. Yes, uh, a voice to be, d TBD. TBD, that's yes. a different actor. I don't know TBD. Yeah. Yeah, Who's TBD? Yeah. That is to be determined. Yeah. So Nemea is... Uh, the, the, she's one of the main characters. One yes. of the main characters. The and, main and so we will, and there may be, we may have some uh, other folks that uh, we know, you know, coming on and doing some voices. Where, uh, mm -hmm. There's some other surprises. And yeah. maybe some other characters I mean, that will I'm, surprise I'm us. Yeah. yeah, and but but let's let's also talk about we've we've kind of danced around. It's the show is called Gabriel and the Guardians. So who's playing Gabriel? We heard Gabriel. Yeah. But this, did anybody recognize Gabriel's voice? Yeah. Nobody. Oh, I see. Oh. If you oh, I think I just heard somebody yeah. say a very very famous anime uh, actor. A very very awesome uh, singer and actor and performer and uh, oh you just gave it away right there <laughs> Johnny Young Bosch yeah. is playing Gabriel we have any Johnny fans here in the crowd <laughs> well do we have yeah, let's, let's any Johnny in oh wait oh. there he is ladies and gentlemen it's Johnny Young Bosch live patiently waiting for his moment 
to finally be able to talk about. He has been the most patient man in the world. He has been waiting forever to say, guys, let me just tell you, he's got like hundreds of thousands of fans all over the world. And he's like, I just, I want to let them know about this. And let's let him talk finally, because he's there live. Johnny, can you hear us? Did you hear us talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are. Can you hear us, Johnny? <laughs> hey. Can you hear us, man? I can hear you. Yes. All right. I can hear you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you're here. You're live with us, man. There's so, a crowd. They're looking can, at you. Oh, no. Can, can he hear? I'm a giant face on the screen. Yeah. Oh, dear. Make it smaller. That's so big. Um, hey, everyone. Uh, Johnny here. Sorry I can't be there, but uh, really excited about uh, Gabriel and the Guardians. And uh, I'm assuming you showed them a bunch of cool stuff. We're yes, going to show we even have. more. We'll yes. have to show some more stuff. Okay. I don't know what you showed yet, but uh, <laughs> stay tuned, everyone. <laughs> but uh, I'm excited for this. Uh, this. This should be a lot of fun, and uh, I, I'm excited about the project and working with the cast, and uh, I'm just looking forward to the story. Yeah, thank you, man. And then, awesome. Johnny, you also may or may not be, uh, he's doing a little music on this, too, right? Is, yeah. that, is that okay to give away? Yeah, yeah. You did some music oh, for us. Oh, yeah, is it? <laughs> We haven't played it yet. Yes. We haven't played it yet. Oh, I mean, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, so, so Johnny, uh, for those of you who don't know, is an awesome musician and has an awesome band. And uh, he offered to do Humble. a theme song for us. And so, yeah, we're going to show that to you guys here in a, here in a little bit. Oh, I'm glad I'm not there for that. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are so excited to have you as a part of this, especially the lead, Johnny. It is so exciting and so cool. I think everybody here is excited to that. They've seen a little bit of you. We're going to show them a little bit more here in a second, but we wanted to make sure that you could come on and say hello there to everybody. Oh, awesome. Well, hey, thank you so much for being there. Thanks for uh, showing this project some support. Um, and yeah, make sure, I'm sure they've said it already, but go check out the table and get more info, and uh, yeah, just help us uh, spread the word. Woo! All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Young Bosch, the star of Gabriel and the Guardians. There he goes. Technology at its finest. Look at this. The poor guy, he's like been waiting the whole time. Like, okay, Obi-Wan, speed it up, dude. He's been in that Zoom room since 8 o'clock. Oh, my gosh. Oh, God bless him. Okay. Yeah, poor guy. Man. Right, so we should probably show... Do you want to show some more? You guys want to see a little bit more of this? All right. Okay. So you, you, you saw the trailer at the beginning, and that was Johnny. You pro some yeah. people probably figured that out. Um, yep. And then this is our... Johnny does have some... He, he, he calls them efforts. I assume you know what that means. Yes. But he did <laughs> efforts for this. <laughs> Lots of that. Yeah. This audio file of just him going... <laughs> <laughs> does, yeah! does he do this? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, some of those. I love those. Those are fun. <laughs> All right, so we're going to show this? Yeah, let's take a look. You guys want to see it? So you, so you... Uh, let's take a Woo! look. Long ago, the world of Aura descended into chaos, and paradise was lost. False gods from the unseen realm deceived the people of Aura, stealing their birthright. Mortals roamed the wasteland, hopelessly searching for purpose. And that brings us to me. A celestial guardian, sent as a light piercing the darkness. My name is Gabriel. Awesome. A little bit of Johnny. All right, there he is. You think he's eaten, and then he's fine. Yeah, he's just playing with the Leviathan. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, very, very cool. Now, okay, so let's talk a bit about how are we going to be able to see this? Now, this is, um, this is going to be done through Angel Studios, correct? correct? I don't know if you all know Angel Studios. Yes, Angel yeah. Studios. Sound of Freedom, The Chosen. Yeah. yeah. And they, they have a streaming So what, what's really cool about what they do is um, they, they support creators. Uh, and so they have a platform where they allow creators to connect with fans to right. partner together to create something. 
And so that's part of the part of the, the model. If anybody is familiar, it's it's kind of like Kickstarter, but it's a little different because yeah. the, the, there becomes a potential for an opportunity for the fans to get ownership in the show and be involved and pay it forward and yeah. have other people see it and it just kind of keeps moving forward and forward from there so it will be streaming uh, more likely than on their yeah we're looking their platform and we're looking at some other very traditional i, I don't want to say the name but some yeah. very popular traditional anime streaming platforms where you uh, will be able to catch this show yeah. as well yeah yeah okay all right so that is awesome okay so now the big question for you, Jason, y you were a fan and now you're a creator. What has been your experience for all these folks out here that want to create their own stuff as well too? Any oh, advice for them? I got great advice for you guys. Okay. Don't, well, get used to sending people messages, just a lot of messages to people and be comfortable with that. And don't be afraid to break the rules because that's like, the, the, what they're going to do is tell you, oh, what I had always heard is like, you know, you, 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 you need an agent, you gotta do this to get in, to get past the gatekeepers. And, um, I, you know, I, I've been told that since this started. How did you, how did you talk to, how did you get this now? I was like, well, I just, I didn't know the rules. Yeah. I just messaged people on LinkedIn. I, sent, I messaged people, on, I went out and looked on a show that I liked and looked at the producers and went, oh, I'll find that guy on LinkedIn. Went on LinkedIn, messaged him. Yeah. Sometimes they responded back and said, who are you? Yeah. Sometimes they responded back and said, sorry, I can't look at anything without, you right. know, I, I, no solicited material, but, but if you do it enough. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody answers. Someone eventually will answer, and yeah. they'll go, hey, yeah, sure, I'll look at your thing, and that's exactly how it started. Well, it's kind of even like with us. We met through a friend, because yeah. I had yeah. just uh, finished producing a movie, and a friend of mine is Dan Hazeltine from the band Jars of Clay, and Dan is friends with Brad, your friend, and who is involved, and so then it was, okay, well, James Arnold Taylor is this guy over here, and maybe you know him. Actually, and, I, I got so, a funny story. I was going to say, okay. there is a funny story about so, that. So uh, Brad... Uh, Brad's a good friend of mine, but I met him because of all that same thing, knocking down doors, yeah. you know, bird dog in the old school way. And eventually someone gave me Brad, Brad's name and, and, and I connected to him and he is the business manager for a band called 21 Pilots. Yeah. And so he basically, like after we, be, we became friends and, and he was like, dude, I really like this project. I think this is really cool. I have a passion for helping artists, yeah. you know, and, and kind of looking at the kind of the alternative route of getting things made yeah. um, indie style and and so uh, but he basically was like I want to introduce you to Dan Hasseltine and he did and so when I met Dan Dan was like Dan was like you know I, I got a friend who like does cartoon voices uh, so I could I tell him about this and I was like <laughs> Okay, this is probably like his neighbor, you yeah. know, something like some some guy that's just like, <laughs> you know, yeah. doing yeah. Yeah. And then he sent me your information, and I and and I I was like, hello there, this is James Arnold Taylor. <laughs> I was like, you you get a lead with that. Oh, yeah. well, that's very nice. That's cool. I feel important now, yeah. dude. <laughs> and then I said, hey, I know Matt Lanter, who's still literally just sitting back over there. Knock, knock. <laughs> How sweet is he to just be sitting here while we're just up here? You really could be up here. I just was, I was trying to give you no, like I, your I evening. I this way now. You, you feel the control of it now? Look at, he's like, I'm the creator of the show. Matt, you sit over there. James, talk monkey, all right. Okay, so, hey, if I say never be shaken, what would you say? Oh, never fall. Okay, so that's a new little thing we all need to learn, right? Yeah. Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, well, so that's the, that's the de declaration of the, of the guardians, the celestial guardians. They have this thing that they say to each other, may we never be shaken, and then the response is, may we never fall. Okay. Then it's shortened to never be shaken, never fall. Okay, so yeah. if I say never be shaken, you say... Never fall. Never be that's shaken. It. Never fall. Never be shaken. Never, never fall. fall. Awesome, I like it, okay. And so, are we learning about Gabriel and the Guardians? Are we excited about Gabriel and Guardians, guys? I think it's, I can't wait for you all to see this. About, so like, what's the time frame? Can we talk about time frame, or is that like hard to, well, that's, hard yeah, to Al's, say? Al's probably got the best. Come on, Al, so pressure's on you. 
we're couple of weeks, first episode, a couple yeah, weeks. Yeah, couple yeah, weeks. Be out. no, no. <laughs> so we, we're looking to go into production in the beginning of 2024, and we're doing 13 episodes for the first season, 22 minutes apiece. Uh, so we're looking to drop these episodes uh, first quarter 2025, and then they'll come out one after another for 13 weeks. But yeah, and so the, and, say, but touch on in that. between then and now, we are. We have partnered with a studio overseas that does manga, and they are yes. working on a, on a manga series for us that will actually start with a kind of a prequel story, and then actually just follow the series, uh, just like a traditional manga does. Yep. And so I, I've got a few of the test pages that, that I can share here from, from it. Um, this is from a studio called Studio Nine Lives. I think what's really cool about this is, you know, I know it's just kind of like this, this small little panel where we're talking about all this and we're kind of, you know, loose and having fun here with all of it. But I, I really believe that at some point, years from now, people will be like, oh, yeah, that dude just kind of started in this little, you know, little panel at GalaxyCon. And thanks, by the way, to the folks at GalaxyCon yes. for letting us really announce this. This is kind of our world exclusive announcement. And they were so kind and excited about the fact that Matt and I were going to be involved with this, too. And so that was gracious of them to let us have this time with you all. And thank you for all taking your time here as well. Because I, I yeah. do want to talk about, um, real quick, our yeah. uh, writers. Um, yes. So David Cunningham is our head writer, showrunner. Uh, and he put together over the summer a phenomenal writer's room. Okay. Um, so we had, he, he put together six writers from around the country awesome talented guys that they, we came together and we got into for a week we wrote the first seven episodes yeah. um, and I've got some footage from that oh would we like to see some of that okay. I think so okay let's take a look these guys take cartoons really seriously So Gabriel and the Guardians is like Lord of the Rings meets Seinfeld, but it's about something. All right, guys, I was going to save this for later, but I can see you guys are super stoked for this. Okay, so you see the splits happening here, right? Yeah. You guys know what yeah. this means. We got JVCD. Woo! No yeah. Way. And every oh, time he awesome. does the splits, huh? It's a special power. I'm yeah, not so sure how this fits with episode seven, where he's not able to do a split, but that was. Yeah, well, it's, it's like we want to we want to show that it's possible to do the splits, and then he loses his splitting power. Yeah, you, and then he, he has to get it, he has to get it back yeah. later. Yeah, he, he pulls his hamstring in six. I really like the show because it's kind of like Chronicles of Narnia meets My Little Pony, you know, with the Twisted Ninja Turtles. So, it's pretty cool. Okay. Yes. I, I didn't know you guys were going to be funny. I, I thought all the funny was going to be for me. Hang on. That is awesome, man. So, okay. Gabriel and Guardians. It is, it is coming soon. It is uh, going to have some very cool voices in it. It's got some amazing art. It's based on some very cool uh, source, material. source material. Yes, that I'm very fond of, quite personally. But... Uh, any other last words that you have to your, your brand new fans here? Anything that you want to say to them? I mean, thank you guys for coming and just hearing what we have to say. I know you guys have never heard of this before. And it's yeah. hard to get excited about something that you don't know anything about. But I really, really appreciate you guys coming and being in this and let us share it with you. You're the first group of people that have seen any of this, really. Yeah, so this is cool. brand new. So... If they want to get more information, they want to become fans, they want to start spreading the word, they can go down to your booth. Yeah, they can come to the yeah. booth. You can go to GabrielInTheGuardians.com. Uh, GabrielInTheGuardians.com. Gabriel spread We've the word. We've got a ton of swag at the booth. Like, okay. we want, we're dying to give away t-shirts and posters and all kinds of stuff, stickers. Yeah, that because that's the way it starts. Word of mouth, right? Start talking about this. So start spreading the word on it. And then hashtag is... Gabriel and the Guardians? Gabriel and the Guardians. Hashtag Gabriel and the Guardians. Okay, GabrielandtheGuardians.com. Hashtag Gabriel and the Guardians. There's a booth down there. You might even see me over there saying hello there. Yeah. And, uh, and please come see them throughout this weekend, all right? Are we all ready to support this show? Yes, I believe yes. so. I, I really... All right, so do we... Do you guys want to see, hear Johnny's song? I want to hear yeah. Johnny so singing. Just, yeah, with rocking that. out. Let's, yeah, let's end on a high note. All right. Here we go. Let's crank it's it. cranked out there.
Alexa, Gabriel and the Guardians, Al Moore, Jason Moody, Matt Lanter one last time. Thank you all for coming out, checking out this. Please come and talk to us at the booths and come see them at their booth and as well. And yes? Yes. Never be shaken. Never fall. All right. Rock on. May the fools be with you, too. All that, too. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you guys for coming. Hey, guys. Thank you for joining the live stream. I am exhausted, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was so great to announce our cast, Johnny Young Bosch, James Arnold Taylor, Matt Lanter. They all were there. It was really fun. And I was so glad that you guys got to be a part of it. If you want to be a part of this even more, you can go to angel.com slash guardians and also go and follow us on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, all the things. All right. And before you guys go, we want to show you guys our torch. Uh, this is basically our pitch on why you guys should be involved in this project. And so from GalaxyCon, Austin, I just want to say to you guys, never be shaken and never fall, y'all. The anime industry has made billions of dollars across the world. At least it has for a few fat cats. <laughs> And while I love knowing that my hard-earned money is going to those in need, <laughs> isn't it about time we got our own piece of the pie? Now, for what may be the first time ever, we can not only watch quality anime, but become owners and share in any potential profits. <laughs> and if you're wondering how big the anime market is, click the link below or go to angel.com guardians to express interest and be among the first to know if an investment goes live. The U.S. anime market is the fastest growing market in the anime world. And this $28 billion worldwide industry is already extremely popular in Japan, the Philippines, and surprisingly, France. We oui. <laughs> The merchandising opportunities alone are going to be ginormous. Oui, <laughs> gigantic. <laughs> but what does the content of that market look like currently? So much of the anime we love is shrouded in dark and nihilistic themes, not to mention crude and sexually explicit content, even ones aimed at kids. Oh. What are you doing? Nothing. Nothing at all. Don't get me wrong, I love me a good revenge story or a gruesome battle scene. Me too. We know. But does it have to be so depressing all the time? I just wish you'd find yourself something more positive to watch. Mom, why are you here? You forgot your lunchbox. Moms are so embarrassing. But she does have a point. What people watch is important. And across the world, rates of self-harm and depression are increasing. Gabriel and the Guardians will be a message of hope and inspiration. A candle in the darkness. But why should you listen to us? The creators of Gabriel and the Guardians have helped produce some of the biggest animes of all time. We've got <laughs> voicing Gabriel, who's played lead characters in super popular animes such as Bleach, Trigun, Dragon Ball, not to mention he was one of the original Power Rangers. Also, creators from other animated stories like The Lion King, Mulan, and Star Wars The Clone Wars. We're partnering with Angel Studios, the studio behind global phenomena like The Chosen, Dry Bar Comedy, and The Wing Feather Saga, the largest crowdfunded animated family show of all time. Also, Sound of Freedom, which was passed on by Hollywood, reached number one in theaters in the USA, earning more than $50 million in one week. That's a lot of moolah. The creator of Gabriel and the Guardians is Jason Moody. Yeah, I used to be a lot like him. A lot like him. Drawing in my sketchbook every day, daydreaming about creating an anime of my own. They said it couldn't be done. They said that someone like me couldn't create an anime. But after years and years of training my skills to become the best there ever We'll come was, back to this? I mean, Gabriel and the Guardians is a story about a celestial guardian who meets a boastful cleric and a cunning princess as they embark on a perilous quest to stop the Chaos Giants. Our heroes race against time to stop an impending threat that could shatter their world. It's kind of like Dragon Ball met Chronicles of Narnia. Pulling inspiration from the Bible, Gabriel and the Guardians delivers a fantastical and epic take on those ancient stories. Gabriel and the Guardians teaches themes like faith, endurance, forgiveness, hope, and courage.
If you want to be part of this story that unites and uplifts kids and young adults of all different types, click the link below or go to angel.com slash guardians. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy this sample of our show, Gabriel and the Guardians. Long ago, the world of Aura descended into chaos and paradise was lost. False gods from the Unseen Realm deceived the people of Aura, stealing their birthright. Mortals roamed the wasteland, hopelessly searching for purpose. And that brings us to me, a celestial guardian, sent as a light piercing the darkness. My name is Gabriel. 